morning and welcome to our time of worship here at Heritage United Church, a place where, well, we will gather once again physically. But until we do, let me share with you our announcements from a very special place within our sanctuary. I thought it would be appropriate for us to share our announcements from one side of our sanctuary that many of you have sat on over the years. And uh, I chose this side because I thought it was also appropriate to be able to get in our, our beautiful Pentecost banner here that Carol DeVere put together for us. She does many beautiful banners for us for the, for the different seasons of the year here at the church. And because Pentecost reminds me of the gathering of people together, people from all over the world that gathered on that first Pentecost so long ago, and in this sanctuary, a place where many of us have gathered over the years, many beyond the days of my time here at the church, going so far back that uh, memories of Sunday school and church picnics and special gatherings, celebrations of life, and I sit in these pews and I remember those that sat in the ones just directly behind where I'm sitting right now. So I thought I would share the announcements from here with you. And our announcements are just that. Things continue here at the church. In your newsletter every week, I always make sure to share with you what the coming lectionary readings are from the Bible. If you're interested in having a look at those before you hear them on Sunday morning. We are continuing on with our Zoom coffee time, tea if you prefer tea, on uh, Sundays at 11 a.m. as well as Wednesdays at 11.30 at a.m. We just gather for about half an hour just to catch up and see how folks are doing. I hope you will join us if you haven't already. It's pretty easy. You can join by either by video, which the link is sent out with the newsletter, as well as I'm trying to remember to include it every Sunday morning as well. Or you can call in by phone if that's your level of comfort. And we just enjoy having a chance to speak with each other. Uh, we have a pretty good group that comes out most weeks, but all are welcome. We'd love to hear from you as well. Wednesday Reflections continue here at the church. Uh, reflections on various passages from the Bible. I have been sticking with the Psalms, but I'm pretty close to venturing on to something else pretty soon, I think. But uh, I encourage you to join me. Let us wrestle together with what we hear. Bring some questions, some questions to mind. Maybe answer a few too. Our annual memorial service here at the church, unfortunately, because we are not able to gather, gather physically in this space, will be postponed again this year. And uh, if a date is set in the near future or in the coming months, we will be sure to let folks know. Please pass that message along to others that you think will need to know that. That always happens on the weekend of June. Well, this year it will be June the 6th would have been the date. So please pass that message along. June 6th, it will be also our anniversary Sunday celebration day. Our personal Heritage United Church anniversary comes up that week, as well as the United Church of Canada's anniversary. And we will be doing some special things within the service for that. And I invite you to join me for Jam, Jesus and Me. Come and check it out. This will be the last session of Jam for the summer. And I have been asking folks to supply me with some craft ideas that might be good for an anniversary service. So there'll be lots of things for the young and the young at heart. Uh, so I invite you to join me. As well as a few of the extra pieces of music will be shared during that gathering as well. Uh, children's pieces. The, the ones that we dance and sing to, I've decided to add a few extra pieces that week so that we can go out singing some of our old favorite children's uh, songs. And those are our announcements for this week. Of course, I continue to encourage you to, to remember to provide your offerings for the church. Uh, they help to keep the lights on, to keep this place thriving going into the, into the future, which you can do, of course, on par. You can drop your offerings off to Carol D's home. You can mail them in. You could donate through our online givings through our church website, or you can send an e-transfer. All those details are available to you in our newsletters, which will be included each week. Actually, we've, we're including those 
twice a month now, but if you need any further details, please just don't hesitate to give the office a call and we'd be happy to help. And those are our announcements for today. On this Pentecost Sunday, we come to gather together for this time of worship. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. This Pentecost, our hearts are together, even though we are apart. Suddenly a sound like a gale force wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. This Pentecost, may God's spirit fill our homes and meet us where we are. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. This Pentecost, we proclaim God's hope, peace, joy, and love are more contagious than any virus could ever be. And they started speaking as the Spirit enabled them. So with one heart and voice, this Pentecost, let us worship God. Let us pray. Spirit of life, breath of God, wind that moves over the earth, we are humbled by your presence and power. We are here this morning to take you in and experience the transforming ways of your love, to rest a little while and sing and pray and be. If we have arrived at this time here empty, may we leave filled. If we have arrived here lonely, may we leave lifted up. If we have arrived here feeling anxious, may we leave this time knowing your peace. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join me if you have made it a practice of yours each week as we share together the lighting of our Christ candle. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You move like the wind, you dance like a flame. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Remind us of the light of Christ in our midst. Amen. At this time, let us join our voices for a hymn filled with the Spirit's power. Let us sing together.
welcome to this time for the young and the young at heart here on the chancel steps at Heritage United Church. And what an appropriate Sunday to be gathering here on the steps as we celebrate Pentecost and also the birthday of the church, which was the gathering together of people from all over the known world, people who had come to celebrate this festival, which happens 50 days after Easter. Can you imagine how busy that crowds would have been? One day we'll be back to doing that too in our city. I look forward to that. But for now, here I am gathered on these steps with Mrs. Bonnet and, and Peepers the Chick, with Fair Crow and, and Chimp and, and Summer Bear. Of course, I've got my buddy Taz down here and our guardian angel bunny with her beautiful hearts. I've got Moose at the back with his summer hat on to protect him from the sun. I've got Betty Boop, our nurse, reminding us to stay safe and as do all of our first responders. To stay home, stay safe and do what we can. We'll get there. Of course, we've also got our guardian angel bear and we've got Jim, our love bear, a reminder of all the love that is shared within a family, a family right here on these steps. I've got Sweater Bear and Sally and Danny and Suzanne, and of course I've got our Farmer Fred back here. And I know Farmer Fred has something more to be showing us this morning, which uh, Joe has been pulling at my, my stool here. He wanted to say something. Yes, I know, and Lucinda wants to talk with us too. Okay, just a second. Yes, what's that? Yes, I have something else to show you, the two of you and everybody at home. What's that? Yes, of course they want to see. This is very exciting. This is all about growth. Should we show them now, do you think, Lucinda? Yes, it's quite exciting. Okay, let me put you down and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Last week, I shared with you a sign that said, so water and wait. Sometimes we do have to wait, don't we? Waiting is a hard thing to do. And we had a pot with some corn kernels in it from the ladies on the town line. Well, look what has happened in a week. This corn has started to grow. And what an appropriate story to share on this birthday of the church, how things grow. These seeds were sown into the soil. They were watered. They were left in the sunlight. All these different things came together to bring growth to these seeds. Each of us are brought together on this Pentecost Sunday to celebrate all of our diff different gifts and talents that help us as a church to continue to grow and thrive going into the future. On this Sunday, happy birthday to our church. Amen. I don't know about you, but over this last year and a bit, I have become so much more mindful of the relationships I have with my family and my friends, with my two puppies at home, with all of the members of this congregation, with those who have joined us virtually online. I am mindful of the relationships that we have rekindled and those that we have continued to to make sure are just as important, even if they might be socially distanced. And I have become more mindful of the importance of this community of faith. However we gather, whether we gather in the pews, whether we gather outside for events, whether we gather virtually, we are all still part of this community. And for that, I feel humbled and honored. And so at this time, 
We acknowledge those things that are gifts to us. The relationships, the homes we live in, the gardens we grow, the communities that we are a part of. And we acknowledge these things as we bring our offering before God this morning, an offering of ourselves and also our financial resources so that we can continue to thrive as this community of faith. One step, one day at a time. Your offerings will now be received. disciples in your mission. So we make this offering for all those in need. May your word of life be heard and your nearness and caring experienced. All this we pray in your name. Amen. And now let us take a moment as we continue in prayer, praying for family and friends for our community and neighborhoods, and for the world around us. Let us pray. Most holy God, the wind of your spirit blows upon us, drawing us into your realm. We are thankful for that gift and for the intercession of the, your spirit that it makes on our behalf. Bless us as we live in the world as people of spirit, filled with the fire of your love. In the power of your spirit, hear our prayers this day. We will pray for your church, the spirit-filled vessel of Jesus all over the world, the many organizations that work with our United Church. Breathe your spirit upon us all. Maintain us in unity that we may hear each other speak the truth of your gospel and understand each other in new ways. We pray for the people of your world, God. We pray for healing and wholeness. We pray for calm and compassion. 
We pray for those who are ill and who are suffering from sickness. We pray for the folks who have been laid off from their jobs and who feel uncertain about how they are going to make ends meet. We pray for ourselves. Help us to continue to be calm and connected. Help us to remember that your world is one of mystery. Some parts of it we will never understand. Help us to remember that no matter what, you are always with us. And so we can take a moment now to share our prayers with you for family and friends we are most concerned about, and also for the things that weigh heaviest on our hearts this day. As we pray first for Bob and Alma Watt, for Marilyn and Bob Palmer, for John Segra and Ali Jones, for Lee Kirby, for Evelyn Lilly and her family, for Joyce Lapp, and for Beth Dorman and her family. And in a moment of silence, let us bring before God those other concerns and moments of joy that we would like to share. Most holy God, we await the touch of your spirit with eagerness. We ask that you enter the lives of each one of us today, refreshing and renewing and healing us with the power of your spirit. May we live with purpose, enthusiasm and courage after the manner of Jesus, in whose spirit we gather and pray together the words he gave to us, praying now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, let us hear a reading from scriptures, a reading from the book of Acts, led by Beth Crane. Beth? Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each one of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phyria and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. For I, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood 
before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thanks be to God. And now let us hear a reading from the Gospel of John. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. Now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment in sin, regard to sin. Because men do not believe in me in regard to the righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now hear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in, into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only where he hears and he will tell you what is not yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from me what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from me what is mine and make it known to you. God bless these readings from our scriptures this morning. Amen. And now let us join together as we sing loving spirit. continue to maintain is my connections with friends through Facebook. It is one that's become a little more outdated, but for some of my older friends, it continues to be the best way to stay connected to them. Just this past week, I was reading some updates from a good friend who once lived in Whistler, British Columbia, where I lived. 
At the time, her husband was a firefighter with the Vancouver Fire Department. For many years, he would share stories of various rescues that he had been a part of. And more than once, my friend expressed her concern about the impact she felt it had on him physically, but also on him mentally and emotionally. She thought that he realized it too, but he still went out week after week because he felt he was needed that he was called to this line of work. This got me thinking about the first responders all around the world, and especially those close to home during these difficult times that we face. I say that just because of those I personally know who work in hospitals and nursing homes, and the impact this past year has had on them professionally and personally. Last week was the Canadian Nurses Association's National Nursing Week. Their theme was, we answer the call. We answer the call. Certainly that is a timely descriptor which highlights the many roles nurses play in a patient's journey through their ordeal. The same, of course, is true for all those who work as first responders, both locally and globally. Every day they go to work and put on their protective equipment in order to answer the call, no matter the situation. My office is safely behind the walls of my home or alone at the church to record these services and all the other messages you have seen over this last year and a bit. So when I think about courage, it is these brave people who come to mind these days. But there are also those who most see just as ordinary folk who exhibit courage in ways too. Some do this in the face of great danger like six-year-old Sophie LeBlanc did back in 2019, who after a car crash, escaped an upside down and partially submerged minivan to wave down passing cars to get her family out safely. Others display courage by choosing to fight injustice instead of turning a blind eye. And some do what they have to when they see someone in need, like Aaron Garrett did back in March of this year, when he ran into a burning building on Queen Street to save an elderly woman. I read that Aaron had been visiting a friend in the area when a fire broke out in an apartment across the hall. They heard the smoke detector and went to the door to see what was happening. As soon as they opened it, smoke came pouring into their apartment. But as they did, they could see someone laying on the floor. Aaron helped the lady up to her feet and outside to safety. However, once they were outside, the woman started screaming because her elderly mom was still inside. Erin didn't hesitate and raced back into the building. After carefully sliding his hands along the hallway's hot walls, he found the door to her unit. He was able to find the elderly woman inside and he carried her out of the building and back to her crying daughter. This time, however, they were tears of joy and gratitude. The work of firefighters, nurses, and doctors, of all first responders, and just ordinary individuals who are called to reach out because of something that moves them inside to show mercy and love for those in need. This seemed like a very appropriate place to start on this Pentecost Sunday, which is Greek for 50th. It comes 50 days after Easter. It is a celebration of the Spirit of God and signifies the birthday of the church. I think it is a day when we, can, we are given a sort of special permission to relax and enjoy whatever wild cards God's been dealing since the beginning of time and to look forward to the ones that are yet to be dealt from God's creative deck. We begin today with the reading from Acts in which God, 
deal some major wild cards to Jesus' disciples and the crowds around them. Wind, fire, confusion, but also inspiration and insight. But unknown to them, they will soon be transformed from a huddle of anxiety and fear to an unstoppable force for God's kingdom. But the day doesn't start out quite so lively, at least for the disciples. Let me share with you what Barbara Brown Taylor, an American Episcopalian priest, professor, author, and theologian of the United States, says about this. She was one of their, she is one of their best known preachers. The first Pentecost takes place during a harvest festival that brings Jewish people from all over the world to the temple in Jerusalem. Actually, they have to make the journey because it's one of the three required feast days of the year, and so they go. There are Medes and Emilites from the east, Romans from the west, Libyans from the south, and Cappadocians from the north all streaming into Jerusalem and setting up their own camps so that walking through the crowded city is like taking a trip around the world. The Arabic singing over here, the Libyan laughter over there, and the wafting of it over it all, the smell of Egyptian food cooking on an open fire. The only group missing is a small band of orphan disciples who are not walking the streets at all, but are huddled together behind locked doors for the fear of their enemies. For all practical purposes, they and their movement are dead. Leaderless, powerless, visionless, the sole survivors of a catastrophe that has robbed them of their future. The world has become a, a frightening place for them and they have barricaded themselves against it, believing that their own safety lay in sticking together, locking their doors and keeping everyone else out. It is a miserable scenario, really, ra radiating all the hopelessness, fear and finality of Jesus' death until with a snammy of sound, the Holy Spirit descends upon the dis dispirited band and torches each head with a flickering fire. And they start speaking strange words, words of power, words of hope, words such they've never heard spoken before. So quickly comes the words from their mouths, the disciples can hardly recognize what they are saying. But the people around them, People from every nation understand God's word in their native tongues. Though not everyone is able to understand and continue to witness with skepticism and declare, these babbling men are drunk. Well, that is until Peter quickly enlightens them with of the notion that, oh no, he says, these men are not drunk. Why, it's Let's see, it's 11.30 in the morning. No, these babblers aren't pickled, they're prophets. It's a wild scene to be sure. Just try to imagine if you can. Flickering flames, babbling prophets, stunned observers, a questioning crowd. All this drama unfolding of the birth of the church on earth and comes as untidy a tale as the birth of any new beginning. Here, on the temple steps, the spirit is the midwife, reaching right out to deliver the messy newborn church onto the wobbly legs of its unsure future, to the scorn of some, but the delight of many. On the first Pentecost, when God dealt the wild cards of wind and flame, Jesus' followers were transformed from the clutch of scared, like-minded folks hiding out from a threatening world to an empowered collection of human candles set on fire to share what they know with a disbelieving world. And to think 
when they open their mouths to say to each other, hey, watch out, your head's on fire. What comes out are weird words, strange languages, gibberish to some, glory to others, until the great noise they are making draws a crowd. Travelers from all over the world begin to arrive. People start learning through the leaning through the doors and windows of the hideout to hear them addressed in words they all can understand. That is until there's not enough room for all of them in the hideout anymore, which is just as well, because they are because what becomes clear that first Pentecost day is that the church is not supposed to be isolated, some kind of hideout anyway. The church is supposed to be an outpost of heaven, a convention of all of us who are fired up for God, on ones set forth by the Holy Spirit to fill the world with God's heat and light. But the thing is, the disciples couldn't do that for themselves, get all fired up, I mean. By themselves, the disciples are just dried up after too much work and too little vision. But when the Holy Spirit manages to rivet their attention, capture their imagination, inflame their hearts, when the Holy Spirit somehow rounds up the confused, the anxious, the despairing, and the weary, and infuses them with the warming, healing flame of God's word, why then, somehow, Jesus' disciples get so tipsy on the gospel that the whole world starts catching on. So yes, we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit and the birthday of the church. But Pentecost didn't happen just once, a long, long time ago. There are numerous passages in the Bible where the Spirit is poured out, when amazing things happen. Think about Philip baptizing the Ethiopian opium eunuch, or Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. Each of these stories represent a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't stop in the Bible stories we hear. There are episodes in church history with big events like the flourishing of monastic communities in the Middle Ages and the many revivals in North America. But it's not just big events. It happens in local contexts as well. The followers of Jesus are given the ability to speak the language of, of those who are assembled in the city and beyond. God grants that we might understand one another. And that we might understand the good news in just the way we need to hear it. Just the way we need to hear it. That was what came to mind when I read a story this past week about a very special project that has been happening at Sick Kids Hospital here in Toronto. I spent many hours at that hospital with our son Andrew throughout his years so that this story really touched my heart. Here's the story as it appeared in social media. A First Nations artist has created a tribute to the patients at Ontario's Sick Kids Hospital. One bravery bead at a time. Thousands of beads make up this shrine crafted by Nico Williams, who said that the project is focusing on everyone's bravery. We got over 3,000 beads from patients, Williams told CTV News. We attached it to the surface that was woven with over 200,000 beads. All of that is all stitched. Williams said he received thousands of letters with the donated beads used to make the project, with past and current patients sharing their stories. The beads are given to each patient after undergoing a procedure, a test, or treatment at the hospital. 
The monument also com commemorates the millionth donor to Sick Kids Foundation. It will be displayed in the hospital in a lasting reminder of the bravery that its patients endured. The beaded tribute is to be displayed in the new Sick Kids building set to be completed in 2023. Our church has always believed in the vision of a fresh start and new beginning in the life of those in need locally but also around the world. I think it's safe to say that what we witness is the act of shared vision, hard work, and faithful generosity as an act of the Spirit. In fact, it is each of these moments that are like another Pentecost, our Pentecost. If we are open to it, God communicates a message of love and mercy to each one of us, and our lives are changed as a result. We hear the gospel message in our own language, in our own images, with our own metaphors, with our own ears. Pentecost wasn't a, just a one-time thing. It isn't over. Why should we be surprised by that? In the gospel reading today, Jesus makes an astounding promise to his disciples. He says that even if they have hard times believing what he says based on his words alone, at least they can believe it because of the works they've seen him do. And then he goes on to say, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Sometimes aided by Jesus' promises of the Spirit, they felt that first Pentecost, we were able to see it working in our lives. I see people around me who are doing their part to continue the story that started so long ago by sharing their faith, living with confidence, claiming the power of God in their lives, reaching out in mercy and love to those around them, and doing more than they ever thought possible. Thanks to God who blessed and continues to bless the church. Let us pray. God, as the first Pentecost, we ask that you do it again. Let your spirit so fill us as individuals and churches that we may be empowered once more to become your instruments of healing and hope and transformation in a world of need. Bind our faith and works together in a new wholeness that we may make a profound difference and bring glory to your holy name. Amen. And now we will be sharing together in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I invite you at this time to pause the service and go and get yourself some bread, some crackers, and some juice so that together we can share in this meal for all are welcome to participate. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us celebrate the gift of life this table represents the gift of physical nurture and strength, the gift of spiritual insight and care, the gift of hope in the midst of despair, the gift of love which can answer all hatred. We come as individuals as we share community and we depart after partaking of this table as a body of believers. In the beginning, God's spirit moved across the waters and called forth life from death and order from chaos. When God's people, Israel, were enslaved, God's spirit led them forth to freedom and into a new land. At the baptism of Jesus, God's spirit descended like a dove, 
blessing him and guiding him throughout his ministry. In the dark hours before his crucifixion, Jesus promised the gift of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to lead and to guide us through the ages to come. Your spirit, God, blows among us as the winds blows among the trees that surround us, or as a billowing breeze brings fullness to the sails of a boat on the great lakes. Your presence, God, is all around us, but we may not always see it. We feel your presence through the actions of others. We see your presence in the beauty of nature. We experience your presence in the faithfulness of communities of faith here and elsewhere. On this Feast of Pentecost, we give you thanks and praise for your many gifts. Joining with all your people as one body, we proclaim your love. And on the night before Jesus died, as he was gathered around the table with all his followers, all the relationships he cherished, he looked out to each of them and he took a loaf of bread. He gave thanks and broke it and said, take and eat. And each time you do, remember me. A little while later, after the meal, he took a cup and he poured some juice and he said, take and drink. And each time you do, Remember the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we take and we eat and we share in this celebration together. And so at this time, I invite you each to take a piece of your bread, to take your cup of juice, and as we dip our bread into the juice, may you say together with me, the bread of life, the cup of salvation poured out for you.
Let us pray. For the gift of the Spirit, for the bread we have eaten, and for the cup we are grateful, O God. For all the gifts of the earth and the gift of each one, we are thankful. Bless us all with peace in the Spirit of Christ, alive in all life. Amen. And now, let us sing together our closing hymn, a favorite here at Heritage United Church. Please join us as we sing, Come, O Holy Spirit, let us sing. entered our hearts, offered us courage, and granted us loving mercy. The Spirit hovered around us, dwelt within us, and moved beside us in this sacred time, in scripture, in song, in sermon, and in prayer. 
As we move out of this time of worship, the Spirit moves with us, always near, always comforting, always home in our hearts. As communities of faith, we take up the challenge to move with the Spirit in these times, to listen where God is calling us, to be who God is calling us to be, to find new ways to proclaim our hope in the body of Christ, alive and ever-present in us. Amen and Amen. <laughs> Jesus. 